A political candidate has asked you to conduct a poll to determine what percentage of people support her. If the candidate only wants 8% margin of error and 95% confidence level, what size of sample is needed? Okay, so give your answer in whole people. That means round your answer up to whole people. Okay, now what they've just asked us to find is the size of a sample, and the symbol for that is, I hope you know, N, right? So we are finding N, that's the objective here. Now, the information that was given is going to go into a formula, and you'll find that formula in the reference packet for test, uh, whichever test this question is associated with. And I uh, believe that should be test three, unless I've made any changes. So let's look at the reference packet. Here it is. I'm going to go to the beginning so it looks the same as what you would see when you first open it. And then you're going to go down to this page. And at the top it says hypothesis, test statistics, and confidence intervals. So these are all the formulas for things like that. And you guys will mainly be using this top portion here on this side confidence interval formulas and on this side test statistic formulas and so we're doing a question about confidence intervals so you might think you're going to go right here into this section but we have not been asked to find the confidence interval boundaries to estimate p we've only been asked to figure out how much sample data must be collected in order to go to this step so this is this would actually have come before you even start trying to find your confidence intervals and if you go to the bottom of the page here, you'll see where it says sample size determination. There's the side for when you're doing confidence intervals for a mean or a confidence interval for a proportion. Now, how do you tell which one is which or which one you should be using? Notice that in this problem it says that the political candidate wants us to determine what percentage of people support her. So she's looking for a percentage that says how many people what percentage support her. So the percentage means it's a proportion, not an average, which would be a mean. So we will want the formulas on this side of the page. So let's zoom in on that. And notice that there are two, and one of them has a 0.25, the other has PQ. Now the PQ is sometimes given in the problem, or at least one of them, usually the P is given, and then you can find the Q because Q is always 1 minus P. Or if, if there's no information given about a percentage that we think is right so far, then you're just going to assume 0.5 for each, 50-50. 50% support her and 50% don't is what you would assume, unless any other information is given. So in the absence of knowing what the percentages are, you end up doing 0.5 times 0.5, which is 0.25. So that's the reason for this version of the formula. So I, I only ever use the one version. And then if I can't find a P to go with it, I know to use 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So here's my formula that we're going to be using to calculate N. All right, so now we just have to gather all the stuff that goes in there. We're going to need Z, P, Q, and E. All right, so now let's read through the problem and see what we have that we can use to get the answer, uh, the pieces here. So it says, if the candidate only wants 8% margin of error, okay, that's our E, so 8% is 0 0.08 as a decimal, at a 95% confidence level, okay, now, that's a percentage and you might be thinking, ooh, that's our P, but no, it's not because it says it's the confidence level and that's something else. So the confidence level is how we is what we use to find our Z-score. So I'm going to bring our Z down here because we're going to have to do a couple other things to get to that. We need the confidence level first, which is 0.95. And what that 0.95 does is it helps us control how unusual our results are going to be allowed to be. And so under the normal bell curve, with zero in the middle for z-scores, so this is my z-score number line down here on the horizontal axis, 
and I want to find a z-score that is not too too crazy out in either direction. So I'm going to use my confidence level to help me with that. That means that, um, and remember confidence intervals are always two-tailed, so that means that I have two tails and in the center I have 0.95 as my confidence. Okay, and remember the total area under the curve is 1, so if I have 0.95 in the middle, then the other two pieces here have to add up to 0 0.05 to complete the 1. And half of that on each side, alpha is 1 minus the confidence level, so that's 0 0.05, and ha alpha half is 0 0.025, and we have that on both sides. Okay, so both in this tail and also in this tail. Now we're going to use that to find the z-score that's marked here on the horizontal axis, the twin brother of the positive version over here, which is really the one we want to use in formulas when we're doing confidence intervals. Uh, in this formula it gets squared so it doesn't end up mattering, but if you were doing a problem where you were actually finding the boundaries, you would want to make sure to make it positive when you do this step down here, uh, here, right here, because in any, any situation where you're calculating a margin of error, it's a distance, it has to be positive. So make sure that you never put a negative z-score or a negative t-score for that matter if you're doing it for a mean in here, always positive. So just to stay consistent, we're going to use the positive version here as well. All right, so with all, all that ado out of the way, I'm going to complete this process. So my alpha, I'll start kind of just reiterating, alpha was equal to 1 minus the confidence level. And half of that, since it's a two-tailed test, because we're going to be stretching the net in each direction, 0 0.025, or you can just put in equals 0 0.05 divided by 2, and then now we find our z-score, and the z-score is the piece that actually goes into our calculation. So we're going to do norm.inverse, which is what we use to find z-scores. You can also use a z-score table to go and work from the inside out to find the z-score. I've been teaching this class how to use Excel to do it, so we're going to go ahead and use 0 0.025 as the probability, the mean of 0 because it's the z-score, and the standard deviation of 1 also because it's the z-score. And notice it's negative, but I always like to put, I like to nest my norm.inverse formula inside of an absolute value, ABS, absolute value formula to make it positive. So now that I have my beautiful z-score, I'm going to bring it back up here, and I've collected almost everything that I need in order to come up with my sample size that I need. So I still need a P and a Q. Remember, the P is going to represent previous research or previous knowledge that we think is correct, and we want to now just use that as a base for finding it, um, doing a new test, basically, a new estimate. But in this problem, nothing, there wasn't anything given. So it told us what we were doing. We we're going to estimate a percentage of people who support this candidate. And they wanted an 8% margin of error and a 95% confidence interval, and then what size of sample is needed. But they didn't tell us hey, from previous research, we think about 60% or about 70% of the people support me. They didn't give us anything like that. So that's when we say, well, it must be about 50-50. That's all we can do, best guess. You know, it could be more, it could be less, but that's what we're going to go with because we have no other information. So then our answer is calculated. Now that we have all the pieces, we are going to do a fraction. And in the top, we have z squared, so I'm going to click on z to the power, caret key, 2, times is the asterisk, times p, times q, and that's the numerator complete. Let me go down to the denominator, the bottom part, and do e squared, so e to the power of 2. 
All right, now, mathematically, since we know we want to round this to whole people, mathematically what you would normally do is round this to 150 because the number to the right of the decimal is less than 5. But for questions like this, you have to always round up, and here's why. In order to come up with this confidence interval that meets these expectations, we figured out that we have to go out and survey at least 150.057 people. Well, obviously you can't survey 0 0.057 of a person, so rather than only so surveying 150 and not having enough, we're going to go ahead and survey 151 people. So that is the final answer, 151. Okay, now I also thought that we should look at uh, another example that shows it without, or sorry, I meant it the other way around. Another example which involves giving you the a, a previous P, and I think this one right here. Okay, so this one looks good. Let's try this one just so you can see what it would be like if the P and the Q were not unknown. Because the wording sometimes can throw you off a little bit, so I wanted to just show this. So it says, you want to obtain a sample to estimate a population proportion. Based on previous evidence, you believe the population proportion is approximately 40%. So that's the P that we were talking about, right? You would like to be 98% confident, so there's another percentage, this one has to do with the confidence, this is the area under the normal curve in between the z-scores, that your estimate is within 1.5 percent, that's another percentage, but that represents a margin of error, because it says your estimate has to be within 1.5 percent of the true population proportion. So you just have to be able to identify or distinguish between these different percentages that are given in the problem. So n, again we're still estimating n, we still need z, p, q, and e, and we can take the p as 0.4, q is 1 minus p, so that's 0.6, and the e is whatever it says within, let's look for that key phrase, and then put in, that's 1.5 percent, move the decimal place backwards twice, so that's point. 0.015, and then we need our z-score to match the 98% confidence. So the confidence level, oops, confidence, ooh, my fingers are in the wrong place on the keyboard. Confidence level is 0.98, that means alpha, the significance level, is 1 minus 0.98, 0 0.02, and of course half of that, which is the area in a single tail, is going to be 0 0.01, and we can use that to find our z-score, our critical value, which is the absolute value of norm dot inverse with a probability of 0 0.01 in the left tail, a mean of 0, and a standard deviation of 1. Double parenthesis, because I have two functions there, press enter, and there you go. So I can use that up here. And now I'll calculate my n, which was, remember, you had a double set of, uh, a fraction, two parentheses with a slash between it. In the top, we wanted z to the power of 2 times p times q, and in the bottom of the fraction, we just want e squared, e to the power of 2. And then your answer is always rounded up no matter what. Now notice mathematically here, you would have rounded up anyways, but remember, no matter what, always go up to the next whole number. So 5773 would be the answer there. I'm going to just put it in here. Hmm? Boo, what did I do wrong?
do not round mid calculation however find, use a critical right so this is actually a good lesson for students do not round mid calculation I forgot to read this however use a critical value accurate to three decimal places well that does that could change things a lot so notice that my critical value was 2.326348 and this is telling me to use three decimal places so I'm going to just round it to 326 and then notice that my answer will be 5,771 now. 